I think CCIP isn't really fully understood yet by uh, by many people and the, the powerful features that are there. This this I've noticed this sometimes happens when you have very security oriented features or features that take into account a problem that isn't fully understood yet. One of the key defining features of CCIP is that it has the risk management network. So not only did we build CCIP in a way where it's made up of multiple separate networks, whereas other bridges are often only one or two nodes, sometimes run by the same entity or the same private key, which really is not secure, which is why there are so many horrible bridge hacks. Some other bridges like generate a single network and they pump everything through that, which at this moment doesn't seem particularly scalable. And it has various other limitations where you're commingling things and doing all kinds of weird things that people might not want. Chainlink allows you to generate distinct individual um, lanes and bridges for distinct individual connect chain connections. And it allows you to do that actually with multiple networks powering each of those lanes and bridges. And this is because Chainlink as a platform is not about just making a single network. It's about a way to make thousands, hundreds of thousands, eventually millions of networks. So what the Chainlink network does is it creates decentralized microservices. The Chainlink network has now gotten so good at generating these decentralized microservices in the thousands is that you can now generate a decentralized microservice made up of multiple networks. And CCIP is the first thing from the Chainlink network that is a decentralized microservice as an individual bridge that is made up of multiple networks, not just even one network for one bridge, multiple networks. And this is defined as the fifth level of cross-chain security, which we have a blog post on, which I encourage everyone to go read. But one of the very unique properties of doing it with these separate networks is we can make a distinct network responsible for risk management. Now, why does risk management matter when you're talking about the movement of value, the, 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 the various risks of transactions that move value and information across various systems? Well, risk management is actually the name of the game for moving value, moving valuable sensitive information. This is how every system that moves valuable and sensitive information is made to be successful. Systems that move valuable sensitive information don't just send all the information to places they don't understand and places that they can't verify the security of, they, they can't understand what the consequences will be. There is actually no other similar system that I can tell that I have seen from bridges to manage this risk. All other bridges just say, oh, let's just send this highly sensitive, highly important information or value over here, even though the security of that thing could be broken or doesn't relate to our beliefs about security or reliability or whatever other property of the system we want. And so this is where all the attacks actually come from, is that you don't have something that says, wow, sending that over there is a massive security risk, is a massive reliability risk, is a massive other type of risk. And the way that all the other systems, all the other bridges will deal with this problem is they will have to force update the protocol. They will just have to ship a new version. They'll probably ship breaking changes. They'll probably have to force everyone to update. But that doesn't work because the, the rate of change, the rate of new risks that appear, the, risk, the, the rate of new attack vectors, the rate of new legal requirements, the rate of new requirements for how value moves between a Web3 DeFi chain and a multi-trillion dollar bank chain, these requirements evolve so quickly and the security dynamics revolve so quickly that you won't have time to change the protocol and force everyone to update with breaking changes. That's just a bad model. The better model is the one that, that CCIP has, which is where you have what's known as a thin pipe, an efficient system for transactional throughput. That's where the committing network and the executing network live. So there's actually two separate networks responsible for efficient secure execution. And then you have a separate network, which is kind of like the smart part of the system, where you can define various policies, various risk parameters, various security parameters. So, you know, such as if that chain is going through endless reorgs, don't send the value until the reorgs stop. If that chain isn't, um, if that chain seems to have been hacked or that account seems to have been hacked, go check this AI powered smart contract security analysis tool. If the contract doesn't meet 
the security analysis threshold for me to send value to it, then require another approval or something like that. This is how all systems that move value work today. They require a deeper understanding of what they're doing in order not to lose value, in order not to do the wrong thing. And none of these other bridge or connectivity systems have this, from what I can tell. Their whole goal is to just uh, ship something as quickly as possible with a minimal amount of audits and a minimal amount of uh, worrying about security, which is why they so often have all these hacks. They often uh, say that they have decentralized security when, when you look at things like multi-chain and others, what you really see is that it's one or two people having all the keys, which then becomes a horrible thing when the system breaks. But before it breaks, it's still obviously a horrible thing, but no one seems to question it, which I think will change as more of those systems break. And they definitely don't have a conception of managing these risks and these problems in, in a meaningful, scalable, reliable way. So I think what CCIP does is not only does it create this extremely high level of security, which people don't understand because security is a kind of an esoteric thing, but to everyone that we show the level of security that CCIP provides, they all agree that it's the highest level of security they've seen in any cross-chain system. That's consistently been what we've seen. But even after the security, you have all of these other properties of what would allow a cross-chain transaction to happen securely and reliably and in a way where banks and asset managers and the rest of the world could use them. And this, I think, will be one of the key defining uh, properties of CCIP that allow this connectivity to happen. And it'll have the greatest amount of counterparties. It'll have the most banks, most asset managers, most systems, in my opinion, because it can facilitate a proper transaction with those systems. And this is where you see us working with uh, large global financial market infrastructures like SWIFT, large CSDs, large banks, large asset managers. I mean, CCIP's goal is not just to create what I would call a kind of dumb bridge that doesn't really verify anything, doesn't really create much security, places keys in one, or one person's hands or one laptop's hands. Its goal is to create real security so it can process trillions of dollars in throughput and to create this kind of flexibility to adapt to the changing landscape of legal, security, reliability, and other requirements, which the counterparties have. And what you want is you want all of those counterparties on one cross-chain system so that everybody can transact with them efficiently. And I think CCIP is very far ahead in uh, creating that type of network and to leading the world towards a single global internet of contracts. So I think right now CCIP is, is still pretty misunderstood, both on how the real security it provides the risk management it provides, and also um, various other efficiencies that it has that other bridges don't have. I think what we'll see is that the adoption of CCIP by large institutions, large infrastructures, large DeFi protocols will show uh, the value of those features. And uh, that's what we have made a lot of assumptions on. We have basically said, let's build a cross-chain system the secure proper way to manage all these risks, to create real security, and to allow rapid adoption into a single global internet of contracts in an open source, global community-driven way. And that is, um, I think, a very big difference.